topic for the next couple of minutes is going to be centroids. We're going to talk a little bit about what the definition of a centroid is and what some of the common terms are for centroids. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some different shapes and how to find the centroid of those shapes. We'll also develop some mathematical relationships. And then finally, we'll end up with some uh, formulas to calculate the centroid for complex shapes. Some of the common terms associated with the, the word centroid are center of gravity and center of mass. Uh, those are the same as a centroid as long as the mass distribution is the same. So in other words, it's all one material. Now here we have, it looks like perhaps an iron dumbbell, and it's all iron, so the mass is distributed evenly, and the centroid, center of mass, and center of gravity are all at the same place, right in the middle. However, if we move our finger to the left just a little bit, we can see that, just as we would expect, it's not going to be balanced and it's not going to be in equilibrium. And centroids are important because we want to know where those forces are applied. One of the things engineers do a lot is analyze forces. So we want to analyze forces in this unit, this statics unit. So we want to learn a lot about centroids. And this slide merely just uh, reiterates what I just said. And that is, engineers want to know uh, where the forces are applied on certain objects, and that is thus why we want to know uh, how to calculate centroids. So we can determine where a centroid is. Uh, here you see an I-beam by really looking at its cross-sectional area. So let's take a look at some common shapes. Uh, we have a triangle a square and a circle. And so we know, for example, that a triangle has an axis of symmetry that runs from the, the top point down to the bottom. So we know that the centroid is somewhere along that line. Now if we have a square and we have, uh, we can draw some intersecting lines, we know the centroid is right where those points intersect. For a circle, we can draw any two diameters and where those points intersect, that also is where the centroid is located. Kind of common sense and pretty simple. But let's take a look at um, how we would express those locations mathematically. So let's take a look at a square, something pretty simple. Uh, there's some conventions here that are common in all centroid calculations. So at the bottom you see B, which stands for base, and that always runs along the x-axis, whether we're looking at a square or any other shape. And you see the capital H, which stands for height, which also runs along the y-axis. So we just talked about where the centroid is, and it's right in the middle. So if we want to express mathematically uh, where to find that, which engineers often do, uh, we can express the x-coordinate, which is x-bar, as b over 2. And thus the y-coordinate, which is y-bar, that's how we say that, is just simply h over 2. Using the same conventions of H and B for a triangle, that's going to be a little bit different. Uh, you might have done some exercises in geometry where you drew some intersecting lines, but basically the formula for a triangle, uh, that is a right triangle, is X bar, or the X coordinate for the centroid, is B over 3, and the Y location is just simply H over 3. And we know what it is for a circle. The centroid is right in the middle. But what about a semicircle? Well, a semicircle has really a pretty simple formula. I won't go through the derivation for you, but I will just simply express it as 4 times the radius over 3 pi. 
So here, for example, you see a diameter of 4 or a radius of 2. So we know then that x bar, if the origin is at the left lower corner, we know that x bar in this case is just 2. And so we want to know how far up y is. So in this case, the distance from the diameter to the y coordinate is 0.849 inches. Don't forget your units. <clears throat> but what if we have more complex shapes? So for example, if I have a uh, rectangle or a square and I put a triangle on top of that or a semicircle on top of that, we can find what those components are of the centroid by using the formulas shown here. And so we see x bar equals the summation of the product of the individual uh, centroids times the area of those parts divided by the summation of all the areas. So you see the Greek symbol sigma. Uh, you probably remember that from math. And then you see on top, I'm looking at x now, x bar sub i times a sub i. And that is all over the summation of all the areas. So in our example of a square and a uh, semicircle, let's, let's call the square 1. We would have x1 times a1, where x1 would be the centroid location of the square times the area of the square. To that, we would add the x component of the centroid of the circle times the area, I'm sorry, of the semicircle, times the area of the semicircle. We would add those, and we would put that over the summation of the area of the square plus the area of the semicircle. One, This is one of those gotchas, though. If you have a complex shape that starts as a, let's say, a square and you are cutting out a circle or removing a circle or a semicircle or some other part, you would actually subtract the x bar ai product. And that is true for both the y coordinate and if we have a three dimensional object for the z component as well. So we have looked at uh, centroids in terms of definitions, what they mean, we've looked at different shapes, and we've looked at how to calculate uh, complex shapes. And so we're going we're to take a look next at a sample problem in the next video.